Today we're gonna to create a modern, low and long TV stand out of two by fours and concrete on modern builds. On a two by four or any board for that matter, we've got face grain, edge grain, and end grain. I'm gonna be using those terms quite a bit for reference in this video, and I just wanted to make sure we are on the same page. Now before I do any building, I'm actually gonna highlight the sponsor of today's episode, that is The Home Depot, which still feels insane to be able to say. So cool. For all of y'all that follow me on Instagram, you know I am at Home Depot at least a few times a week, whether that's for materials, lumber, or other project supplies. But something you may not already know is that Home Depot also has an amazing selection of smart home and tech products available both in store and online. A couple episodes ago, I highlighted the Tile Mate 4 Pack. These are trackers that you can attach to any of your favorite items and be able to track using your smartphone. With all this traveling back and forth to New York, I attach them to my luggage, my backpack, even my filming essentials like my camera. Home Depot also carries a wide selection of smart home security products like this Ring Home Security Starter Kit. But in today's video, I'm gonna be highlighting a new favorite of mine. This is the Roku Premiere 4K HD Streaming Media Player. Roku has done an incredible job of consolidating the entire streaming universe down to one device. Whether you watch Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, or any other streaming service, you can find it on Roku, along with live and free programming brought to you by Roku. And Roku's remote control and user interface work so well together that it's a great user experience. So to learn more about the Home Depot and their wide selection of smart home products, make sure and follow the links that I've got down in the description below. Now let's get this video started. The base for this TV stand is made completely out of 2x4s, and the first thing I did is separate them by which was nicest, their face grain or their edge grain. I was just looking to see which sides had the straightest, cleanest grain. And I gotta say, I was really impressed with these boards from the New York City Home Depot. I think they might have been the nicest 2x4s I've used. For all of the boards that'll eventually have their edge grain showing, I cut a miter across the face of each of the board at 45 degrees. Then I measured and marked 92 inches on the long edge of the board and cut that bevel. For the boards that'll eventually have their face grain showing, I adjusted the miter saw so that it was beveling along the edge grain of the board instead of the face grain. And instead of me relying on a tape measure to get accurate cuts, I actually used the pieces that I cut first to measure and mark for the second pieces. That way I knew everything would be a flush, clean fit. Cutting the pieces for the sides of the TV stand were basically the same steps, except they were only mitered on one side of the board. And if you're interested in building this project for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description to my website where I've got free, downloadable PDF plans. It'll have basic diagrams and dimensions, that way you'll have all the info you need to build this with no problems. And finally, once you've got all of your pieces cut, we can get ready to set up and assemble this TV stand base. So this is when my camera battery died at what could be the worst moment possible. It was right when I was gonna assemble the first few two by fours. Essentially, I started by getting one of the boards that'll have their face grain showing and sandwiching it between two boards that'll have their edge grain facing out. Then I used two and a quarter inch trim screws to attach the pieces together. I used a spade bit to drill halfway through the other board with the face grain showing. That way I could make sure the screw got through the board and into the one underneath since I wasn't able to drill from the underside. Then I laid down a healthy bead of Gorilla Wood glue and I screwed that board into place. And it really doesn't matter that the screws are showing on this top plate, there'll be a concrete slab on top of it eventually and they'll never show. Now that the long assembly is put together, we just need to attach the sides onto this TV stand. And once I started using these trim screws which have a really small head on them, I really wasn't worried about having a few visible fasteners. In the end, they leave a void that's just a little bit bigger than a 16 gauge finish nail and I can wood putty that no problem. As I added each layer, I could feel this whole base getting more sturdy and that was just by screwing everything together. Once the glue had time to set, this even got more hefty. hefty, hefty. And a couple times I used these thin paint stirring sticks as shims for a couple of the boards that weren't as thick as the other 2x4s. I obviously wasn't going for perfection here. Ben and I were on a remote project building out podcast studios for my buddy Andrew Schultz. So I wanted something that was relatively quick to put together, but still served its function well. 
I think it serves that purpose well, but it's also a great piece of beginner DIY content, which I don't build as often. I built the form for the concrete top out of a sheet of three quarter inch melamine. And here you see me using a straight edge and a circular saw to cut the form pieces to width. The finished dimensions of the concrete top are 20 inches by the full eight foot sheet long. Whenever you're screwing melamine together, it's important to pre-drill before you screw. Otherwise the material has a tendency to bubble out and that'll translate onto your top creating a divot. A crucial but often skipped step in creating good concrete forms is applying a coat of paste wax. What this does is it creates a layer of separation between the form and whatever you pour in it. This makes the concrete release easier and it also helps making good silicone caulk beads around the corner of the form, which we'll do next. You just apply a coat of paste wax, let it set for about 10 minutes, and then buff it clean. And to get a clean round over in all of the corners of the form, I used this, which is a cake fondant tool. This was a recommendation from my buddy, Mike Clifford from Industrial Maker. He's got a great channel with a ton of concrete videos. His stuff will be linked down in the description. And then once the silicone dries, you can peel off all of the excess, no problem. At this point, the concrete form is basically finished and my next step is to create a plywood inner core to this concrete top that's two layers of three quarter inch plywood thick. By reducing the total number of bags of concrete I use, this top is gonna to be way lighter. It also means that I've gotta mix up less bags in the next steps. And to make sure that the plywood core was waterproof and didn't absorb any moisture from the concrete, I applied three heavy coats of Verithane water-based polyurethane. And now it's the moment of truth. I grabbed Ben Ueda from the channel Homemade Modern to give me a hand mixing and moving all of this concrete. I think everybody knows he's the master of DIY concrete projects, so it was nice having him there to give me a hand. We just mixed and poured each bag, making sure to tamp it down to work it into all the corners and reduce air bubbles. Then we inserted the plywood core. We just wiggled it down until it was flush with the edges of the form. Then I screwed it down. Once the concrete had a couple of days to cure, we could move it into place and take it out of the form. Ben also attached a two x four spine along the back of the base. That way the concrete was supported all around the perimeter. Overall, I love this project. It's such a simple build, but still has a really cool, unique look. It's made out of the cheapest materials I can think of and is a really awesome beginner DIY project. Here in Andrew Schultz's studio, it really works with the rest of the furniture to create this industrial loft warehouse vibe that I really dig. And if you wanna see any of the other videos from this space, make sure and check out the playlist linked down in the description. It kind of sucks that I had to leave before the project got finished. I've never actually seen it done in person, but shout out again to Ben for taking photos as well. I made a whole playlist of all the videos that I made while I was in New York at Schultz's studio, and you can find the link for that down in the description. If you're interested in a Modern Builds hat, you can find a link for that in the description as well. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. I appreciate y'all watching, and we'll see you again. Bye.